Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 29th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk about a change in the model forecasts for the Atlantic hurricane season, indicating an increased risk of storm development. Just as a historical context, would like to note that so far this year, the Atlantic hurricane season has, has, has trended about average with three tropical storm, I'm sorry, four tropical storms, and one category one hurricane and one category two hurricane. Correction, three tropical storms, one category one hurricane, and one category two hurricane. It's worth noting that the tropi tropical Atlantic itself, the zone that typically produces most of the storms has been relatively quiet due to a combination of unfavorable atmospheric conditions, a, a good degree of dust coming off of Africa and a cooler than normal sea surface temperature persistence in the region where storms tend to develop, despite warmer than normal sea surfaces pervading over large portions of the North Atlantic. It's worth noting that this is in contrast to the Pacific, which presently has about five areas of interest when it comes to tropical cyclones, including Lane, which or the, the remnants of Lane, which recently moved through the Hawaiian Islands, and two disturbances that, that may encroach upon Hawaii over the coming days, as well as a couple of disturbances in the Western Pacific. Moving over to the Atlantic, we see a area of disturbed weather presently emerging off of Africa, and this is just one region that has been indicated by the National Hurricane Center and various models for potential development. Though presently the National Hurricane Center potential development map is not yet picking up on longer range model forecasts, it's worth noting that a number of models have shown a potential for development both in the Eastern Atlantic the central tropical Atlantic, and in the Gulf of Mexico in particular. It's worth noting that these models are, are starting to make some news with headlines in USA Today, and a number of models showing development in the tropical Atlantic, as well as a, a few models as of yesterday showing the potential for strong storm development in the east, eastern Gulf of Mexico. Dr. Rick Nab notes that when models start suggesting tropical cyclone development many days in advance in multiple parts of the Atlantic Basin, while they might not be right about exactly when or where, it does indicate that the atmosphere is changing and it's about to get busy overall for September. So just a general overview of, of the present model forecasts, which, which are now really starting to heat up and show an intense, I'm sorry, an increasing potential for tropical cyclone development, which is, is something we want to take a look at. Now I'm going to go ahead and provide for you guys an overview of the present a number of present climatological situations that relate to the present hurricane season. It's worth noting though that, that the atmospheric models point toward, it, toward a change in atmospheric conditions that produce a, more li a greater likelihood for tropical cyclone development. What I'm gonna look at is some overlying or underlying synoptic features that might influence storms if they do form. It's worth noting that the equatorial Pacific 
according to NOAA, is presently transitioning to an El Nino state. Though we don't have an El Nino state, it's, worth, it's also worth mentioning that El Ninos tend to tamp down hurricane activity and tropical cyclone activity in the Atlantic by affecting wind shear and having a net effect of producing more wind shear for the Atlantic in regions where storms do form. Though we're not yet in an El Nino state and the trend presently is more in, 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 in an El Nino neutral range, which may result in some flipping back and forth between atmospheric conditions that are more or less favorable for storm development. It's worth noting that last year, which was a very damaging season for Atlantic hurricanes, occurred during an INSO neutral period as well. Looking at sea surface temperatures, the region where forms storms tend to form coming off of Afri Africa and running through the Atlantic in the range north of 10 degrees north latitude and south of 20 degrees north latitude is still seeing sea surface temperatures somewhat cooler than normal, although these are warmer sea surface temperatures than we have seen so far from an anomaly basis this year. As we get into the Caribbean, we tend to see more warmer than normal sea surface temperatures, although departures aren't quite so high and trend closer to average. But as we get close to the United States, sea surface temperatures heat up quite a bit. And this is a bit of concern because any storm that runs into the Gulf of Mexico or moves into the region off the U.S. East Coast will tend to see more fuel provided for storms and so we may see storms maintaining intensity closer to shore or even intensifying as they come close to shore if in the case where storms approach the United States. It's also worth noting that atmospheric moisture levels remain rather high. I'm gonna go ahead and look at moisture levels near the US East Coast. And so we see basically tropical levels of moisture pervading over much of the Gulf of Mexico off the U.S. East Coast and over the Southeast U.S. And this would also tend to provide more fuel for storms if atmospheric wind conditions and prevailing wind conditions and wind shear, low wind shear con conditions favor storm development. So Given the larger trends, it appears that if storms do development, there may be an additional kick for storms that do approach the United States. I just also like to say that human-caused climate change overall provides more energy for, for storm intensity and peak potential in, in intensity in the form of warmer than normal sea surface temperatures and higher or rising levels of atmospheric water vapor overall. But it's also worth taking a look at regional variables as well, which for the year, near United States region includes sea surface temperatures that are one to 1.5, perhaps up to two degrees Celsius above normal, particularly as you get into the Northeastern region and atmospheric moisture levels that are, are very high, both providing added potential fuel for intensification of storms. So just to sum up, models show that the Atlantic hurricane season is likely to start to heat up and prevailing conditions near the US may provide more fuel for storm intensification for storms that do approach the United States. If they, do in the, if they do form in near U.S. regions and track near the United States. Thank you for joining me, and I'll be chatting with you soon.